G'day. Linux is an incredible platform for professional audio, but it can be tricky to set up. To help you get going with a pro audio Linux system, I've developed a simple script for you to run. In the next few minutes, you're going to take a vanilla Linux installation and turn it into a music production powerhouse. Let's do it. It's best that you run this script on a clean installation of Linux. First, open up a terminal by clicking on the application menu, typing terminal, and pressing enter. Next, open up Firefox and navigate to my GitHub page. The direct link is in the description if you'd like to copy and paste into the browser. I have scripts available for many flavors of Linux. Today, we are setting up Ubuntu 20.04, also known as Focal Fossa. If you change to a different flavor of Linux in the future, come back here and use the script for your new Linux. Let's find the correct script. It's important that you don't blindly run scripts that you find on the internet. There's nothing dangerous here, and I'm happy to answer any questions, but if you're in doubt, please ask an experienced Linux user to review any script before you run it. You're in safe hands here, so let's run the script. Copy the command from the GitHub page or from the description below and paste it into your terminal. Press enter, enter your password, and wait for the magic to happen. This script takes a few minutes to run, so let's jump in the time machine for a moment. When you are asked to enable real-time process priority, Use the left arrow to select yes and press enter. Right, the script is done. It's time to reboot. I'll see you back here in a second. Welcome back. We use a tool called Cadence to manage connections to our sound card or audio interface. Let's open Cadence. This is an easy but somewhat tedious process. Don't worry, you only need to do it once. First, we'll configure Jack and we need to specify our audio device. So come over to the Driver tab and select the Ulsa Driver. Your built-in speakers will look something like this. PCH, analog, HDMI, etc. An audio interface will look like this. Usually it will mention USB. I'm using a Focusrite Scarlet today, so I will select that here. Next, we will set sample rate and buffer size. I've included a link in the description to a great video that explains sample rate and buffer size in detail. In the meantime, I recommend 48,000 and 512 as a good starting point. Now, there are two important things to note regarding MIDI keyboards. First, we need to ensure that the MIDI driver is set to none. Once we've done that, we can press OK here. Next, we need to ensure that the Ulsa MIDI bridge does not start. So come down here to Ulsa MIDI and uncheck Start with Jack. We're almost there. We'd like all of our audio, for example, Firefox, videos, Spotify, etc., to play through our audio interface. To do that, we will make sure that the Pulse Audio Jack Bridge is running. So come down here to Pulse Audio and make sure that Auto Start at Login is checked. Lastly, let's start Cadence each time we start the computer, so we're always using this nice audio setup. 
check auto start jack at login. And that's it for the configuration, I promise. Let's start jack. Occasionally we will get one or two X runs when we first start jack. This isn't a concern, but be aware that if your X run count increases while you are recording, then you will need to adjust your sample rate and buffer size. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. The installation script has installed and configured a tool called YA Bridge. This tool allows us to run Windows VST plugins on Linux. Let's see how that works. First, find a plugin that you want to use. Let's use the fantastic FabFilter Pro Q3 as an example. We need to download the Windows XE file. If there is an option, always choose the 64-bit version. Then open your file manager, navigate to the downloads directory, and right click on the exe. Some desktop environments will give you the direct option to open this exe with Wine, but by default, Ubuntu will require you to open with other application. So click that, and we want to open this with the Wine Windows Program Loader. Let's run this. The first time that this runs, you will have to install the Mono. For the most part, when you are installing Windows VSTs on Linux, you can click next, next, next through the installer. The only caveat is to ensure that you select the right locations for VST2 and VST3 versions. VST3 is pretty consistent, but for VST2, we have the option of using the default Steinberg path or a custom VST2 path. So let's work through the installer. Next. Yes. Now this is where we will choose our VST2 path. We want to go to C drive, program files, common files, and select VST2. Again, VST3 is well standardized and you generally don't have to define the VST3 location. Let's continue. We don't need to install the AAX versions of any plugins. We only need the VST2 or VST3 versions. Let's finish the installation. All done, almost. This final bit is very important. Anytime you install a new Windows VST plugin, you need to synchronize YA Bridge. To do this, open a terminal and type YA Bridge CTL sync. We can see that there are two new versions of the plugins. All done. Now we're ready to open our door and make music. Bitwig is an incredible door. You could create almost any kind of music with the built-in instruments and effects alone. This streamlined workflow is very important because we don't want our brain getting in the way of our musical inspiration. The installation script installed Bitwig for us, so let's start it up. When we first start, we need to install the Essentials package. This contains all the basic instrument and effect presets. Let's install that now. While that installs, let's open the Bitwig dashboard and check out the help resources. There's a broad range of resources to cover different learning styles. I highly recommend the first steps and discover Bitwig Studio videos that Bitwig have produced.
And for the readers among us, there's a 500 plus page user manual. Let's tell Bitwig how to use our audio interface and MIDI keyboard. Let's come up to the settings tab, audio page, and we'll ensure that our driver model is jack. Then on the controllers page, we will connect our keyboard. I have a Nectar GX49 keyboard and Bitwig has auto detected it. Some keyboards are not automatically detected though, so here's how you add them. Click add controller, select MIDI keyboard, press add, and in the drop down, select your keyboard. When you have selected your keyboard, if everything has worked well, the little power icon here will turn orange to indicate that your keyboard is enabled and ready to use. My Nectar has been detected automatically. Power button is orange and we're ready to go. If you get any errors here about the device being busy or the audio engine crashing, it's because you forgot to turn off the Ulsa MIDI bridge in Cadence. Finally, let's check the plugin configuration. Bitwig is pretty smart here and it knows where to look for Linux VST plugins. It has automatically found our FabFilter ProQ plugin for us. Now that the Essentials package has downloaded, let's take a whirlwind tour of Bitwig. I have a new video coming soon that will walk new Bitwig users through creating your first song, so keep an eye out for that one. There are two main types of track in Bitwig, instrument and audio. Instrument tracks let us play virtual instruments via MIDI. Audio tracks let us record analog audio via guitar or microphone. Let's check out how to add our FabFilter Windows VST. Come down to the device panel, click the plus to add an instrument or effect. Navigate to the VST plugin category. And there's our plugin. Let's add it. Nice, Windows VST plugins on Linux. For the most part, this will work. There are some Windows VST plugins that don't work, but that is typically uncommon. Check out my Does It Tux video series where I install and review Windows plugins running on Linux. Okay, that's the Whirlwind Bitwig tour. I haven't even scratched the surface of Bitwig, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Let's briefly touch on Reaper. Reaper is one of the most capable doors on the market, period. It will stand up against Pro Tools, Cubase, Logic, and others every day of the week. Plus, it's only $60 for the full license, which is incredible. I have decided to install it with this script because it's such a powerful door and it offers a different but complementary workflow to Bitwig. Open your application menu and click on Reaper. We'll do a quick configuration of Reaper. Go to Options, Preferences, and ensure under Audio Device that the audio system is Jack. Reaper will automatically locate our Windows VSTs. Let's insert a track. Go to Track, Insert New Track. We can add a plugin by clicking in an empty FX slot and finding our desired plugin in the list. It's important to note that Reaper ships with some very capable plugins. They don't have fancy custom user interfaces they don't look like vintage hardware, but they sound incredible. I highly recommend that you learn to use them. 
They are free and they sound amazing. I would start with the rear comp compressor and the rear EQ equalizer. In the meantime, let's add our Windows VST plugin. We come over here to VST3 and there's our Pro-Q3 plugin. Just as good as if we were running on Windows. I have included links to two fantastic Reaper resources in the description below. They are relevant not just for Reaper, but for music and audio production in general. Okay, we're all done. You now have a functioning Linux audio powerhouse with two incredible doors ready for you to make your musical mark. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it has helped you. If you have any questions, if something didn't make sense or it didn't work, please comment below and I'll help you out. Have fun. See you later.